QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Sales by customer account and item graphs. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction going through the setup process we do every time. Maximizing the home page, going to the view drop down, noting we got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off. Open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company financial, PL, profit loss, income statement, range into the change in 0101 31 2, 4, January to December 2024. Customize it. Fonts and numbers to change the font to 12 and OK. Yes and OK. Reports drop down again. Company and financial again. But this time the balance sheet drop down to change the fiscal year 12 31 2, 4. Customize in the reports with the fonts and numbers to change it to 12 and say OK. Then we'll say yes so we can say OK again. And those are the reports we've been opening up every time. The main two financial statement reports, all other reports pretty much backing up or giving more detail upon expanding with one or more light line items on the major two financial statement reports that we have open before us. We're now looking down here on the sales item, going to the profit and loss here, the P and the L, and we're looking at the sales items. I'm going to condense the sales collapsing them this is the total sales notice here on the profit and loss it's broken out by category the account category of the sales we can further break down the sales by who owes a, or who we sold to by customer in other words and by item what the thing is that we sold the services and the inventory so the two reports that we saw to expand on that in prior presentations was we go to the reports drop down we go to the sales item we have the sales by customer summary so if i select that one it's breaking out let's go ahead and customize it make it a little bit larger on this fonts to 12 again okay so it's easier to see for blind people whose eyes like are not working right all the time whatever so we've got this sales by customer Notice I'm going to change the date up top from 010124 to 123124. And so there we have it. So now we've got our sales broken out by who we sold to by customer instead of by account. Note the total down here, 452,943.25, as we saw before, doesn't exactly match the profit and loss. If I was to minimize the income, 454. Why is that the case? Remember that as you enter the data into the system, if I go to the home page, to have things uh, entered properly to, for the subledgers to work, you typically need to enter your sales with the sales forms of invoices and the sales receipts, which require you to enter a customer and an item, allowing QuickBooks to automatically create the subledgers. If you enter sales with just a deposit form, and particularly if you don't add a customer, you're going to lose some of the added data of the sub reports. You might still want to do that because you might need to do that for like if you're on a cash basis, you're doing this with bank feeds and that's easier to do. But the trade off of doing that is that you're not using the natural forms within QuickBooks and you could lose some of the detail, which would be the sub ledgers breaking out the income by uh, who you sold it to and by item. And so so that means that your sub ledger can get thrown off more easily than can the subledgers for accounts receivable and accounts payable, which require every time you use that account to have a customer or a vendor. So they kind of force those things to tie out. Okay, so if I go back to then 
the profit and loss. There it is. The other way we can break this out is by what we sold. So we could go to the reports drop down. We can go to the sales and we want the sales by item summary this time. And let's go ahead and customize it and see if we can bring the font up to that one as well without totally messing it up, even though it's a little bit more complicated because it's got these longer columns. But now we're now we're breaking this out by who we sold to. And so, I mean, not who we sold to, by the items we sold, inventory items and the price. And once again, the total down here, I need to change the dates from 01, 01, 24, 12, 31, 24. Now, then, if I total it up, we're at the 452, 943. Doesn't exactly tie out to the uh, profit and loss for the same reasons as with the customers because you might not have used the sales form so some things can be applied to that income line item without giving the added detail of something that you sold which is the item service or inventory item throwing off the sales uh, report a little bit so keep that in mind then we're going to open the graph by going to the reports drop down sales and you've got the graph which is called the sales graph so if we go into the sales graph they give you a little bit more options with the sales graph than some of the other uh, graphs the accounts receivable and accounts payable we put in place same kind of things apply however you can make these graphs by exporting the related reports to excel and then using excel to make a pie chart and to make say the graph up top for example uh, but this is a nice easy way to get to the graph and of course you can cut and paste this you can print the graph and add that to the month in summary reports that you give to a client or to your supervisor and or uh, as a presentation tool they are good as well so if i go to the dates we can change the date let's bring it from 010124 to 123124 notice there's a range here because now we're talking about uh, something that's supporting an income statement report and then if I look at up top, we've got by item, by customer, by rep, uh, next group, and then print and refresh. So the, these are the, the formats of the graph. We can see it by item, inventory item, service item, by customer, that's the other sub ledger report, by rep, if applicable, if you have the sales rep. So these first two are most likely the most common graphs that you would be using. Let's take a look at the first one, by item. Down here, we've got the pie chart. And we've got the information for the pie chart. So they basically took the sales and they said by item, which means inventory items or service items, the things that you are providing to help generate revenue, cash inflow for the company. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they put everything else in other. So you could see this if I look at the installation, for example, if I go to the items by sales by item and we scroll up to the to the installation where is the installation here it is so i'm going to pull up the trusty calculator so we got the installation labor right there and so that's at the 113823.823.5 divided by the total which is at the 452, so divided by the 452943.25, moving the decimal two places to the right, we get to we get to 25.12 uh, about. So if I go back on over 25.13 about, so that's going to be the general idea. This adds up to the 452943, which is the amount on the sales by item. Uh, 452943 which you would expect which again doesn't quite tie out to what is on the uh, income statement or profit and loss obviously when you provide these graphs in your reports you want to be aware of that because someone might ask you the question they might say well what is this what does this represent well these represents the things that we are selling in percentage basis you know the top to the to the lowest this doesn't tie out exactly to what is on the income statement possibly because there are some items which were adjusting entries that make it a little bit different and you want to be able to account for that or understand that so that when that question comes up you can explain what that difference is in, in that particular situation so that's the general idea here this thing up top represents the sales by month 
And you'll recall that if I had a profit and loss report, you could break it out on a month by month basis. So I could say this is January through December, and I could say, let's see this on a month by month. And now you can see uh, your totals on, well, I'm looking at the income line item, the totals here uh, compared to the, to the total for the year. And this could be something that you can easily kind of do in Excel as well by just basically putting this data into Excel for your totals, for your total income on a year by year. And you could just type it into Excel because there's only 12 columns and type that in there and then make a, then just insert a chart. And that would be an easy way that you can take this data and actually format it in Excel. With this pie chart that we just looked at, you can easily export this data. This is a little bit more complex because all you really need is this column right here. So you'd have to do a little bit of removing the subtotals and the extra columns in order to trim down the data to what you need, which would be this column. And then you can easily just insert a pie chart and you have a whole lot more flexibility with the pie chart once it's in Excel, as we saw in the prior presentations. We won't do that again. We won't actually export it to Excel, but you can see with those two reports, you can, you can make the Excel graph fairly easily. And then if we look at it by customer, so now we've got the pie chart broken out by customer on down, on down below. So that would be tying into the sales by customer report, which you could just export this uh, to Excel and break this out by customer. Note, this is different than the last pie chart because the last pie chart was showing the, the uh, accounts receivable, what is owed to us by customer. This time we're looking at sales by customer. It's a little bit more confusing because we have those sub accounts again. If you didn't have sub accounts or jobs, in other words, then it would be a more straightforward of a report and even easier to export to Excel. But even this pretty easy, you can export it to Excel. You could format it, trim it up so that you have the totals per customer. And then you can make a, a pie chart based on that data in a similar fashion as we did with the accounts receivable uh, by customer broken out. So, and, and if you were to do that, just like before, you can, you can make the pie chart not be 3D, you could change the colors on it. You might say that I want more or less representation instead of just having it at 10. Instead, in other words, have more or less that are grouped into this other category down below. You got a whole lot more uh, flexibility. So those are the, so, and, and note that on the sales side, you could also make one. This one was sales by item, sales by customer. If you went into your sales or profit and loss, and let's bring it back to the total. You can also break out your income. If you have multiple income categories, then you might just, you can export the profit and loss to Excel, or there's usually not that many income categories. You can just retype into Excel the income categories and by account, just these are the accounts for each income category, which is usually a grouping of whatever, of whatever you sell, right? So you're not gonna be putting all your customer data into, into the profit and loss. You're not gonna break out each account by customer. You're not gonna break out each account by item typically, which is what you sell inventory or services, but possibly by the major grouping of the items, such as the major groupings of service items or the major groupings of inventory items. And then you might make a pie chart of that if you wanted to, right? You can then type those into Excel and then say that's a percentage of the total and then just highlight it and make a pie chart based on that information. So with the sales items, then you could make a pie chart by taking this information into Excel, make a pie chart of each account compared to the total. That would be one pie chart you can easily make. And you can make another pie chart, which is provided in QuickBooks, or you can make it yourself, which would break out the income by who you sold it to by customer using a sub report. And you can export that to Excel, or you can use the QuickBooks report. You can also make a nice pie chart on your income, breaking it out by what you sold, the inventory items, not the accounts, but the inventory items at, or the service items by using the sub ledger, breaking out your income by inventory items, exporting that to Excel. Or again, you can use, of course, the quick graphs over here. So it's really useful to kind of see these graphs. They can be a quick way to add some color to your presentations, but 
uh, if you can export the data, and you want to at least know where the data is so that you can explain what the graph is doing. And then you might want to create these graphs in Excel with the use of the reports, giving you a much understand, better understanding of what you're doing and much more control about the presentation of the graphs, how you want them formatted, how you want them to look.